Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Crypto CJ. Welcome to today's trade of the day. This is a new Friday afternoon yeah. Zoom edition. We're going to be focusing on Altcoin Alert and how we can use the software to make profitable trades. And um, though we do have some not so good luck, uh, Bitcoin's been in a free fall the uh, last few days, bouncing back and then falling again today. Uh, so it's made really any kind of day trading difficult, but uh, we will go ahead and, and look at all coin alert and at least check out some setups that maybe we could use later on today or tomorrow. And um, well, we'll go from there. So I'm going to share my screen and we'll look at Bitcoin first. So can everybody see my one hour Bitcoin chart? Raise your hand if you can. All right, good. So our, our tech is just cruising along so far. Okay, so this is the one hour chart on Bitcoin. And again, we've gone over this, we meaning those in Crypt Nation and other <laughs> YouTube and everybody's gone over the recent dump over 50% from the high. Um, but I wanna focus on, on this area right here. I've drawn these pink lines and these are, this is the channel, I think, that Bitcoin's going to stay in for a while. Um, by a while, it could be a few days, could be a couple of weeks. And, um, and right after I drew this line, it, it, you know, this, uh, this candle, this hour candle wicked down and grabbed this uh, like 33.8 area and then bounced back pretty hard. So I don't know if it'll get all the way down to 30,100 like it did on Wednesday morning, but um, I, I can see this bouncing more than once down to the 30, you know, 32 level around there over the weekend and maybe early next week before it, before it gets up here to around 41, 42. And then eventually it's got to break through to get back to where it was and hopefully trek on up to, you know, six figures uh, sometime this calendar year. But uh, anyway, that's my brief overview of Bitcoin. And you got the, the standard deviation of two on your pole launcher bands, right? I have two and three. So two and three, are they both on there? Yeah, the dark green here is two, and then I set up okay. another one with three. Thank you. So yeah, it's it's easy to do if you if you want to set up a third deviation, you just uh, set up another Bollinger band and go to your settings and change from two to three. So which looks like it's uh, like there at the third one. Yeah. So you put two on there. Yeah, two is this value here. But I mean, you have two, two indicated, correct? Two Bollinger banners. You have it on there twice, basically. Right. So that's the, the one that most people are used to seeing in two. And I've got my length is 50, which is more conservative than most. Most people, the, the, the default is 20, but mine's on 50. Um, it gives me, well, uh, 50, 50 <laughs> days or 50 periods of time depending on what chart I'm looking at. So, and then you just simply add the Bollinger Bands again, and you instead of that standard deviation for two, you put three. And uh, a couple of traders I know like to, like to put low buy orders on these third standard deviations, though that's more on the five minute chart. We'll look at that right now. So, like I mentioned, Bitcoin dropped here. I thought it was going to head down to 32 or 31. It bounced back hard. So it's like we have some support here, at least in the short term. And now it's uh, it's here at the SMA line and kind of hanging around there. So we always trade Bitcoin first. Uh, it's a habit you got to get into uh, if you're a day trader or a swing trader or leverage trader or, or whatever. Um, you know, it's less of an issue if you're, if you're buying and holding, but I think for good entry points, you, know, you should look at Bitcoin, see where it is um, at the minimum on the, on the one hour chart. You know, if you see something trending up, then that's where you might want to enter on a longer term trade. But regarding altcoin alert and short term trades, you know, we're going to look at Bitcoin first to see where it, where it is. Ideally, it's just kind of cruising along, consolidating. That's the best place for Bitcoin to be when we're, uh, when we're buying altcoins. Trending up slightly is good too. So any questions on, on Bitcoin before I move over to altcoin alert? All right. 
So here's what we have for altcoin alert. It's well, it looks like one of mine just dropped out. Um, top five, number one is Matic. I love Matic. <laughs> I did really well on Matic uh, after <laughs> the big dump on on Wednesday and looking uh, looking for another um, another trade on that. So I've got the Matic chart here. I was watching this this morning. I set an alert here on the RSI. Yeah, the 15 minute RSI where I like to set alerts, it went off. So I checked the, my five minute chart and I saw that it was in a dip sequence. I waited for a couple of green candles and I got in a little too late actually. I was doing some emails and it got away from me a little bit. I, I, I bought right here around 140 uh, punched up over the SMA line and dropped again. So, however, on Wednesday, I bought this for 175, sold for 199. So I'm pretty confident it'll work its way back up there fairly soon. Um, also on altcoin alert, you know, it's the number one, very bullish. And this elder impulse value is interesting. Um, don't usually like to read on my Zoom videos, but I think I will because this is going to be hard for you guys, to, for people watching this who maybe are not in Altcoin Alert to uh, to read it. But this is, I think I'll summarize it. This is working on the 20 hour and 50 hour averages and it's, uh, it's it creates a score that's momentum based following momentum and trends. So um, Bryce, Paul and our Crypt Nation group likes this. And this is his idea to add this uh, these columns to to altcoin alert. We have a bullish on the daily, a bearish on the hourly. So the hourly time frame is just one hour from now, and, and the data updates updates every minute. So so an hour from now, we think it's bearish, but you know, 20, 20, 20 to fifty hours from now, I, well, one day from now, we think it's bullish and that, that's good enough for me. I'm a day trader. I don't need to make make money in an hour. An hour trade is awesome, obviously, but uh, I, I'm okay with waiting a day. So with those scores in mind and uh, what I saw on the charts and, and my knowledge of Matic in the past few days, you know, it's trading range. You know, I felt good about making that trade, even though I was a little late. So I'm in Matic and it's down a little bit, but I'm not sweating it. Another coin I like a lot is RLC. I did a video about that yesterday. It was in the top five. Looks like it just dropped to number six. Um, it's all, it's also bullish on the uh, Elder Impulse and um, the score in the uh, low 80s. So this is the RLC chart. It's very similar to Matic. I, I did not buy this one yet. I, I put a, lot, a low buy order in down here. Um, actually, we're right about here. I saw some support, 6.3. So we'll see if that drops and hits that. And uh, then we'll be off. But ideally on altcoin alert, when Bitcoin's behaving reasonably, I'm usually looking for two different kinds of trades. Uh, the dip sequence, which is pretty obvious here. I've talked a lot about one, two, three dips on other videos. Just a quick recap. You've got a bubble here and then it goes into a squeeze and then starts to bubble out again on the Bollinger Bands. Got my first dip here, second dip, third dip, and look, it punches up. But then it goes into another dip sequence instead of going through the SMA line. It's mostly following Bitcoin at this point. One, two, big crashing dip here. So sometimes if I only get two dips and, well, actually one could argue this is the same sequence. Yeah, because this never did make it to the SMA line. So technically we're in a fourth and a fifth dip. So those are even better. Um, and these are good. If you buy up here on the third dip and then it keeps going down, this is where you ladder buy, you get a you know, dollar cost average and get your, you know, get another position in and lower and that lowers your, your overall exit point. So um, with that in mind, I'm hoping to catch this. 
and I'm going in both Matic and RLC and pretty much anything I trade today with very small buy orders, about a third of what I usually do. Um, because, you know, I'm, I'm concerned about Bitcoin and I want to be ready to, to ladder buy. Or, you know, if I have to, if something really goes badly and I have to sell and take a loss, the loss won't be that bad. So. Okay, any questions on RLC or Matic? Oh, actually, there's one other place I like to buy too, and that's if Bitcoin is going sideways or trending up, I like to get in above the SMA line. I don't like to buy on the SMA line. That's the average. So, and a lot of traders use this as um, as resistance. So you can see this whole candle pattern is just trending down below the SMA line. But if something goes hard above the SMA line with a couple of candles, I'll go ahead and try to catch that, what I call a squeeze trade to the top of the Bollinger Band, or I can be more aggressive and look for some re recent resistance, like right about here. So, I mean, at the top of the Bollinger Band, I've got 3.9%. And then on this, uh, this resistance here, I've got uh, you know 9.7%. Either one of those would be a good, you know, a really good So, okay, let's see what else Altcoin Alert has. Um, I put stars here on, on the coins that are on Binance. I trade on Binance International with uh, the VPN. I do a little bit also on FTX and uh, Coin Metro and a couple others. But, but I looked up this, this Verge is on, on something I don't use. So I'm not going to look at that. CKB just made an, a, an entrance. I have traded this coin. So let's look at that one. I actually got this one here. I suspect it's going to look like the other charts we just looked at. So I was familiar with the trading uh, range already with Matic and RLC. I am not with this coin. So I'm going to look at the, the day chart to get an idea of where it's been. Now, everything's dropped, you know, 30, 40, 60, 80 percent this week. So I, I know that nothing's near an all time high pretty much. But again, in a more normal situation, I would I would check this out to see if we were close to an all-time okay. high. And that might uh, make a difference into whether I make a decision to trade or not. But obviously, we're nowhere near one. And I have to mute everybody. Okay. I think that took care of it. Okay, so... So that's what I usually use. Look at the day chart first. Go over to the hour chart. You know, more recent highs and lows. You know, as, as recently as the 18th, uh, a few days ago, this was up to 28 cents, or sorry, 2.8 cents. But it's down about half that since since then. So I'm gonna look at my five minute chart now and see if I want to get in this. It's it's hanging around the SMA line, not where I want to be. So I might do an alert down here or do a low buy order, which is a little risky if I'm not around to check it out. Um, that's since it's, or I would, I don't do this very often, but I could put an alert up here above the SMA line to make sure I had some candle action above there and hope to hopefully catch this in a, in more of a, a squeeze or a trend trade. But I'm looking almost entirely for dip trades based on the current Bitcoin action. So I'm not, doing anything with with this this kind of action here. Yeah, see, I wouldn't mess with anything like this the way Bitcoin's been lately. So that's what I see on CKB. I probably am not going to take a trade on this. I'm a little depleted in my uh, cash reserves right now. Um, and I'm already, already made you know, the Matic trade and I put a low buy order in on RLC and, and a couple others. So that are not related to altcoin alert. So that's where I am on that. Um, any questions so this on this week? I'm sorry. So this week, the way things are going, <laughs> it's just a unique week and a great week to start this uh, altcoin alert call. Um, you're still looking at the altcoins 
and making small buys, a third of what you usually might do, because you think they're they're likely to move more than Bitcoin, uh, relative. I mean, percentage wise. Yeah, the alts almost always do. So, um, have you been buying? That's a Bitcoin? good point because we do have some rising Bitcoin dominance. Um, yeah, I mean, that was sort of throwing me off because I didn't know, you know if I had, had X number of dollars, should I just buy some more cheap Bitcoin and stack it up and then try to build up some cash and play the altcoins again, which is what this call is about. Or, you know, is it, would you think it's better to just go ahead and play the altcoins thinking they'll move more? Well, the altcoins almost always move more, but, but if you're looking at an overall approach to trading crypto, you know, one could argue that you know, the Bitcoin, Bitcoin is due to make better moves. So you might just want to throw all your money in Bitcoin. And there's, you know, probably a lot of people doing that. Where's just buying it. <laughs> but that's no fun. I'm a day trade. I want to <laughs> trades and, you know, I don't want yeah. half a percent or 1%, even though there's programs out there that teach it. But yeah, um, so, yeah, there's nothing wrong with that approach if you just want to, to buy Bitcoin. But obviously that's, uh, you know, people haven't bought altcoin alert to do that. So... Uh, but exactly, <laughs> it's not a, you know, there's nothing wrong with that strategy. Just uh, yeah. not quite what well, we're it just seems like a unique week. I was wanting to know what your take was. Uh, it's I haven't traded much since since Wednesday morning. I, I did a lot once I saw Bitcoin coming back. Um, so when I saw this, you know, I, I made quite a few trades, and, and some mm -hmm. worked out nicely. But then. Eh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so are you just trading your buying and selling spot or are you, are you using any kind of other vehicle? Uh, that's a good question. Features or anything? I'm a, I do about half to some, maybe 60% spot. And then I like the leverage tokens on Binance and FTX for two to three X leverage. But I've not graduated all the way up to, um, you know, futures leverage and all that, 5x, 10x, 100x. I'm not comfortable with that yet. That's next for me. I'm taking some steps steps to learn how to do that. But um, you know, I don't do it yet. Okay. Um, how do you access Binance if you're living in the states? Uh, the VPN. I use pure VPN and trade from Canada. Uh, a, lot, a lot of other people use Nord VPN, N O R D. So, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, let's uh, Blue Zell. I've traded before. Let's check out that one. Um, yeah, most of the coins are just hanging around this SMA line right now with similar patterns. So, yeah, if I wanted to trade this one, yeah, it looks like it it hit below 30 on the RSI in the 15-minute chart. It was one of my favorite uh, favorite alert, alerts to set. If there's a coin I'm interested in that's not dipping where I want it to yet. Uh, and then when that goes off, it lets me know it's usually in a second or third dip or a crashing dip. So you can go ahead. Do you have a, an exit strategy with your approach? Yeah, let me look at, the, let me show you that again on my Matic. On Matic, I bought a little late, like I mentioned, about 140. And... I see some resistance here, four or five candles at, uh, at 151. See some more here in this area at about 155. And then again up here at 163. Obviously the higher each, each level you go up, the riskier it is. I set my sell order in between those at 1.565. It's right about here. So I'm looking to get it right around you know, nine or ten percent. That's my my current strategy. As a day trader, I love to get nine to ten percent in a day. So, so in the downside, do you have a? 
And then I would usually set a an alert either on the RSI or, or, or a percentage alert or maybe a, a support alert, like one might be here. There's only one candle down that low. Got a cut. That's pretty close to where I bought, so that's uh, I, I wouldn't sell at that point or, or ladder buy yet. Um, I go forty. Probably go right about here. Add an alert. I like round numbers, so I probably go to like one twenty six. Ladder buy. So if that goes off, you know, I will evaluate the situation at that time and see if uh, if that's a good I'm I'm usually looking for you know, after after the alert goes off, I'll look for some green candle action going back up and then I'll I'll make my ladder buy. So And if you want more information about ladder buys, go to, you know, Crypto CJ's Trading Odyssey, my YouTube channel, and I've probably got 10 videos on it. So, or you can just search Crypto CJ ladder buying and find it that way. But um, it's been a little controversial. And my video yesterday is, you know, should I incorporate uh, stop losses more? And I'm probably going to, especially on the leverage tokens, which I haven't been doing. And yeah, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to do that more. All right. Any other questions? Yeah, on... Laddering in works till it doesn't kind of. That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> it uh, worked great. It works. Jane. It really works. But <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> it works better if you take smaller, if your goals are smaller. And, and I'm sometimes too aggressive. I'm looking for. Well, that's. 10, I mean, it's, 10, it's. It shouldn't be that hard for you to transfer that to futures. You know, if you're keeping the small mindset. Um, it's just though you, you yeah you probably do want to have a clearer exit on the downside. <clears throat> Indeed. Yeah. All right. Um, any questions on that? Uh, well, you should also say that sometimes they change the uh, feed your reward on the leverage token while it's in progress. That's true. That's happened to me. My worst losses have been because of that. So. And that's usually when I've stayed in something for a few weeks and, and th that I'm going to stop doing too. So but Patrick's right. If you trade leverage tokens, they will change the, the I call it renumbering, but you know, it's revaluing or something like that. Um, and, you know, what, if it goes back to where, you know, where the underlying coin was, it, uh, you know, it, um, it can really go against you. So like a casino changing the odds. It's kind of like that. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. You got some chat. Okay. I've got some, yeah. Ladder buying works great. till you run out of money that happens too, or maybe you're in three or four, excuse me, different positions and you have to choose one or two that you can ladder buy. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, I do that a lot in Forex and, and I'm playing so small that, you know, I can withstand a huge turnaround. And, uh, but man, when you get 60% in a couple of days, <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> even that's the most too much. responsible fucking, even the most <laughs> responsible <laughs> leverage use is like, yeah, mm -hmm. it's all tossed out. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, so um, yeah, looks like we're having a little a little discussion on ladder buying here. I didn't expect that, but that's cool. It's a it's definitely a, a strategy you should know about, and um, you know, and and use it. I, it does work better in a you know in a bull market. There's there's no disputing that. But if yeah, if your position's dropping, it's hard to put a number on it, but. You know, below for me, it's probably going to be about thirty. I'm probably going to be 
doing one or two ladder buys and then setting a looking for either support or 15 to 20%. I was thinking out loud in my video yesterday about this and then setting that and just taking the loss. And I figure like a 30 or 40% loss is better than 60 or 70. And at least got the, I've got that cash back to, to put back in, in a position that that's, that's coming back at some point. And I can, you know, recapture that loss in a few days, hopefully. So, all right. Um, oh, Pat's here from Easy Trade. Welcome. Okay, so let's see, where was I? I think I was looking at Bluezell. It really looks the same as the others that I've talked about. So I'm not gonna talk about that anymore. Let's look at some different ways to sort altcoin alert we've no i wanted to look at something else first let's talk about the sig devs because i know there's been some confusion on that so i'm going to stop my share on this and go over here Hopefully find this fairly quickly. All right, so what SIG devs are useful and which ones are not? You guys seeing this, uh, seeing the SIG dev on the Slack group okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. All right, so I'm going through these in, in reverse order. Um, you know, the, the software is obviously looking for keywords and it's just in practice for the software to have somebody analyze the content before it's sent to us because by the time that happens especially on a new listing it's going to be too late so that's why some a lot of these are useless but the ones that are useful can be profitable so um like we've got this social nft platform i don't even know this is traded anywhere so this isn't very useful um this might move Dogecoin that more evidence of working with Elon Musk, but I think people know that Elon Musk works with Dogecoin. That's really not news. This is sort of interesting. We've got new listings on Huobi, but that's not a big, a big exchange. So that's probably not gonna move the market. So this is not something I would, I would look at. In a strong bull market, Sometimes these can provide a you know five percent bump or something like that on a coin. So um, that's the same with uh, new tokens on Kraken. Kraken's another smaller exchange. So really, what we're looking for on on new tokens is Coinbase Pro and Binance, not Binance US. So this one just says a new listing, but I, I'm used to this format. This is probably going to be Bithum. This one's kind of in between. Though I find a lot of their uh, new listings are coins that are only on, um, you know, Uniswap or something like that. And every time I try to buy something on Uniswap, the the gas fee is higher than the <laughs> or higher than my potential profit. So that, that usually, usually discourages me. Uh, Loopring announces a collaboration, but with a company I've never heard of. You know, if this were Loopring announces a collaboration with Walmart or Google or something like that, and that's that's something I would, I would look at and probably uh, probably buy that coin in that situation. And a lot of times you'll get more than one announcement of the same same event. Like we have two about this Loopring collaboration. Okay, X is another small exchange, um, which again probably isn't going to move the market. This could SEC blocks partners from commenting on the Ripple lawsuit. It really has more to do with a lawsuit than anything that directly affects Ripple. So I, I, I remember seeing that, but I didn't do anything with it. So as you can see, the trend here is you just have to think about these and most of them are not gonna be helpful. Here's one that would have been helpful had Bitcoin not being such a jerk this week, but uh, SOL launching on Coinbase Pro. This is what we want. These are, um, you know, Solana is a really good project. It's on, I trade it all the time on, 
on Binance and it's it's new to Coinbase Pro. This is good stuff here. It, you're going to be a little late to it. There's nothing you can do about it. When I I was already in this when this this announcement happened, it popped about 10% and then dropped immediately because of, you know, all the Bitcoin nonsense. So more tokens on Kraken. This one was interesting to me, but the timing again was bad. In a, in a normal day, actually this was yesterday, so I think I, I think I was already in FTM, or I would have bought this based on this collaboration. FTM collaborates with Phantom, collaborates with Chainlink, one of the biggest, you know, blue chip cryptos we have, and you know they're they're working together. So, so of the things I've looked at so far, this collaboration and the Solana launching on Coinbase Pro are two, I think, actionable um, SIG devs in a, in a more normal market. But uh, any questions on, on that? Mm -hmm. uh, I thought you guys would be into this, okay. Then I will go back to altcoin alert. And there are different sorts you can do on this. You can't sort based on, on this necessarily. At least I tried to. And no bullish came up on top. I mean, if I was, you'd think a bullish would come up on top, but it didn't. So I'm not sure what's going on with that, but you can sort uh, the other. I like to sort on trading activity as one. Um, yeah, maybe they have it set to alphabetical or something. Yeah. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> My Maddox sold. Sweet. <clears throat> All right. So got a little bit lucky here. Maddox pumped up. And I was I was out at 156. So I've got like nine percent profit in in about an hour. So that's pretty cool. So Nice. All, I could give all coin alert a little bit of credit. It did bring this attention to my attention. This is the first thing I look at. Not the first thing, but probably when I sit down on my computer, I do some stuff on my phone before I get to my computer. But, um, but having this with a, with a bullish score like this is very helpful. And it's one of the first, it would, it's one of the first coins I looked at this morning. And again, this afternoon when I was getting ready for this. So but realistically, I would, I'm aware of Maddox trading uh, volatility lately, and it's something I would have looked at anyway, but, you know, Altcoin Alert helped me locate it. So I'll give them some credit for that. Okay, we're sorting by trading activity. And I can't be right. All right, this is what I want to look at. So these are the trends that you're trying to catch. Um, and a lot of these have room to move. They're in the negative. Civic, I traded. I had to ladder buy it. But I got out of this yeah. yesterday with a small profit. Uh, and then it pumped up some more. And now it's back here. It's not very bullish on short-term sentiment. And trading activity is good. AA score is good. Um, got bearish on elder impulse on the daily, and that so that might discourage me. But let's um, let's look at civic. And it kind of looks like the others. So. How it has worked its way above the SMA line with some, you know, with multiple green candles. So that's a good sign. It's a small move to the top of the Bollinger Band, 2.78% if you bought now. There's some resistance there too with these guys, these candles. Next resistance I see is right about here, with 11%. And what I do like about this setup is you know, it's got a lot, lot of room to move to where it was yesterday. So my favorite 
trades or retraces dip and a retrace back to where it was recently. Sometimes in the bull market, I've done these kind of shows and I'm like, I'm going back to the 15 minute, 30 minute chart to find, you know, uh, some retracements because there aren't that many dips. So, or it's, you know, pushing an all time high. And those, those can be difficult to trade. But one of the nice thing about Bitcoin doing what it's done is it's uh, created some trading ranges and some dips on pretty much all the altcoins. So this one's not bad. I might look at it soon, but CJ, I think we'll later than I would like to be. Yeah. On this particular chart, the dip went lowest at about an hour ago. Right. So how often does altcoin alert uh, adjust their bullish scale? Well, the software says it updates every minute. So I assume it's calculating the algorithm calculating something every minute. And I've, you know, just the time I've been on with you guys, you know, we've had changes in the AA scores, you know, RLC was on here um, when I was getting ready and then it fell off, you know, the first half hour you, you, you were talking. Okay. So we can assume every five minutes it's current. Yeah. And if, if it, doesn't look current to you, then you can always just refresh, you know, reload and you're good to go. Yeah, and actually RLC has, yeah, kind of disappeared. Go back up to the top. Here it is, 31. There's a, there's a thing that under the top five scores, mm -hmm. there's a search coin box that didn't used to be there. If you type oh, RLC. Oh, nice. It'll just go straight to the one coin, and then you can. Oh, I love that. Yeah, love they that. slipped that in. I, I missed it, and suddenly you it said was something. I probably would there have been on this for weeks and never noticed. John, you're my hero. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So, yeah. Because sometimes you're looking for a particular coin, and I, and I used to scroll like you know, yeah. hundred coins down to find it. Well, Even you can when they're look, alphabetical. It's hard to find. Yeah, you can look. Um, there's all well, my video stuff's in the way, but yeah, you can click on ratings feeds and find it too. It'll give you recent feeds. Ah, yeah, see, I didn't know that one. Yeah, so like, yeah, it'll let me know. I used well, to I just do control F. How does that do it too? That might work too. Yeah. Well, since I found that little uh, place underneath the, the top five, I, I like John's thing better though. This is all the time. Okay. Let's see what's in the chat. Have you noticed all when right. you go to the exchange lookup and you try to type in a coin, it's like takes forever. You have to be like exact with the uh, upper lower case and all that kind of stuff. It's, it seems really clunky on the exchange lookup. Yeah, so I, don't, um, I don't use it much anyway. I know I can do it on trading view. Yeah. I've always got a few yeah. trading win view windows open, so. I've got a CoinGecko tab open that I. Yeah, that's another way to do it. Um, what John's talking about is we have this option here on the exchange lookup and search coin. I'm not even going to do it because I never do it. So yeah, there I go. And these will, will come up and you can search and find out what exchanges are on. Type like RLC in and see how it comes up. Uh, I just went, just went away from it. Well, ah. Yeah, this is like the clunkiest part of altcoin alert to me. Yeah. So there it is. Oh, I mean, wasn't that was too bad. Yeah. But, I've had it where it just goes away and thinks about it for a while. Uh, Maybe they fix something. But, you know, I can do that. You know. I can just do right. it here. And that's just, right. to me, that's just much faster. So. Yeah. All right. Well, um, we're on 40 minutes now. And that's... Uh, Sounds about right. Um, yeah, Jim's 
in the chat, Jim is confirming updated by the minute. That happened six weeks ago. Thanks for that, Jim. And um, Kim, Kim Crypto is uh, saying they added the search box from pure peer pressure about a month ago. <laughs> a month ago and I didn't see it? I want this like every day. That's embarrassing. <laughs> You're busy making money. Yeah, yeah I guess. <laughs> Okay, so um, they did announce it in one of the meetings a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> I don't know how I missed that. I did miss a couple of meetings this month. Uh, my darn mother. It's so annoying to have a personal life sometimes. Anyway, um, so I'll throw this open to uh, any he said questions. It's so annoying to have a personal life sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, it can be. He goes, my darn mother. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, all right, so uh, unmute yourself or ask any questions you have in the chat. Let's keep it focused on altcoin alert for now. And then um, uh, at, uh, once we exhaust that, I'll probably stop the video and just hang around for a while and we can just uh, brainstorm anything you guys wanna talk about regarding crypto. So any other altcoin alert related questions? How would you define AA score? Um, Probably with this little question mark, it's this uh, this description here. Oh. Um, but it's a it's an algorithm with a lot of different factors. Takes into account uh, sentiment through you know the ties data and, and Twitter and uh, other websites and social media uh, with the price with the price action and uh, tries to make a prediction on what's going to move. So um, I think since they improved this. Now that we have scores in the 80s and 90s of coins that, you know, are at least close to blue chip, uh, I, you know, I've had much more success with it. Uh, you might remember my videos. For those of you have you been have been with me for a while, you know, over the middle latter part of 2020, I was using other source other searches instead of the AA score. I wasn't using the AA score much, but um, in the last couple of months I have. So I'm I'm pleased with with how it's worked out. So on, on one of the last, uh, I don't know if it was this week's call or last week's call, Joshua Frank, who came up with the tie in AA, says that the AA score is like 100% based on sentiment, based on Twitter. And that the, um, that was my understanding anyway, that it, hmm. it basically filters through all the Twitter feeds to get a sense of whether it's positive or negative and uh, the sentiment, and then it comes up with a score based on that. And you know what? I remember him. Yeah. My impression was was that that was a lot of it, but not all of it. But um, you know, maybe maybe you're right. I uh, don't have to maybe look See. into that again, or maybe they've changed it. But um, I mean, what we're trying to do with the AA score is to find something that's going to move you know, in the next day or so. So, um, you know, obviously that, uh, you know, the sentiment, the social media, the Twitter and all that's a significant part of it. Um, but yeah, I'll have to nail that down a little bit better. Thank you. Starting to wonder if I just gave an old definition, but uh, thanks for that, Jim. I'll have to figure that out and if I'm gonna host this show, know it, know it better. So anyway, um, any other questions on Altcoin alert, I got a chat. Here's a, a question, if I may. You know how Bryce, and again, this is for the lifers, um, Bryce Pizza, he, you know, they put out swing trades or short-term trade alerts, coins, you know, every week. Um, do you, before you make a trade on those, do you have a look at the AA scores to make that judgment call for those particular coins? Um, probably not because if I'm, if I'm looking at that, it's based on a swing trade, something over several days. And I don't use okay. the software to evaluate those type of trades. I do those type of trades, but they're not based on altcoin alert. I use altcoin okay. alert for day trading. That's fair. But, Thank you. you know, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Um, you it's know, almost we... like, you know, okay. The, you know, coin X. Um, okay. So let's see what, you know, the AA score for coin X is you know, 50 or 55. So maybe it's not, 
at that time, you wouldn't jump into that right away until that score for that particular coin coin goes up to you know a minimum of eighty. Um, I'm I'm just curious because I never know which way to to play with play as but, as they goes. kind of advise in the uh, you know in the little question mark areas there that it should be just one of the several things that you do be, you look at before entering a trade. Um, so I can, you know, if I'm looking at the chart and it looks like it's ready to go and this score is not, I mean, I'm going to go with the things I know better, I guess. And then, but you know, it's just nice if it's there. Um, but again, it's, this is just the sentiment, not all crypto moves only or crypto doesn't only move by sentiment. It just tends to be more sensitive to sentiment. Um, so there's many other factors that make a, a price move. Yeah, and Cheryl T from our our Slack group just said something similar to that, uh, that Jason. So um, yeah, I think we're we're on the right uh, right page. Okay, so but that's that's interesting. I I hadn't thought of that. One thing I like about groups like this is we have traders of various experiences and and trainings and and approaches and i hadn't really thought of using altcoin alert for swing trades i've only recently started swing trading um, or getting back to it anyway when i joined crip nation a little over a year ago i was looking to get into it and i was trading the the lifer uh, or the um model portfolio but i just didn't keep an eye on it very much and didn't do that well with it so i said oh this this swing trading sucks i want to go back to to day trading, but you know, too many people are making 30, 40, 50 percent or 100 percent a month. I can't, I can't ignore that anymore. So, I just set up a separate finance account for that, and that way I just keep it away from my my day trading. And then I look at it once a day or twice a day, and I got a trading view list for it. And so, you know, I, I check them every day, and and that's how I how I do that. But you know, evaluating those kind of trades from Altcoin Alert's a pretty good idea because I think we've, you know we've probably all had the experience. It's a really good one where you make a swing trade, you think you're going to be in it for two or three weeks and you hit your target of 15 or 20% in a day or two. You know, that's awesome. So you might find uh, that situation a little bit better from altcoin alert than you might find anywhere else. So, okay. Um, I think, is there, are there any other questions? I think I'm going to go ahead and and to stop the recording here, and I'll hang around for um, for questions afterwards. For those of you watching on video, thank you so much for attending my first Friday afternoon Zoom for Altcoin Alert. I'll be back next Friday.